Hey, what's up, everybody? It's your boy Bo, and I'm back with some more Truth and Facts Sports Talk. Shout out to the movement. Everybody's moving with us. Uh, shout out to Three Kings Boxing, where you go get the latest and greatest of anything that's going on in the sport of boxing. All right, and as a matter of fact, this interview is being brought to you by Three Kings Boxing. I am joined today, ladies and gentlemen, by a former amateur standout and now a professional standout as well, Miss Hannah Rakin. Did I say that right? Yeah, you did, yeah. Okay. Hello. Because I, I have a habit of butchering names. <laughs> I know. You did a good job. That's fine. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, we're going to be talking to Hannah today about our amateur career and our professional career. But before we even get into all that, I, I got to ask you the same thing I ask everybody. What happened one day where you woke up and you said, I think I want to get punched in the face? Because if, <laughs> if, if I'm not mistaken, you actually played an instrument. Oh, I do play an instrument. That's oh. actually my other job. I'm a professional classical musician, so I play with orchestras and I teach music to kids. So um, that's right. what I do when I'm not boxing. <laughs> so that has to be a a, 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 a a switch that is like, how do you switch that off from a calm, cool musician to a ferocious person that want to take your head off? I try and think about the whole, um, you know, it's all about performing. So with music, I'm performing on stage, you know, and I'm under the bright lights. Um, it's the same with boxing. I just happen to be in the ring and trying not to get punched in the face. So it's, yeah, I try and think of it like that. <laughs> okay. All right. Now, as uh, in the amateurs, uh, it's, it's, it's definitely a lot different than the pros. Tell us a little bit about your, am uh, your amateur career and some of the things that uh, you notice is different be from amateur to pro. So, well, I don't know if you know about me, but in, in the UK, I didn't actually go through the amateur system like uh, other people did. Um, I went from white collar boxing. I don't know if you have that in the States. Um, white, white collar boxing is when you start out boxing, you know, like for charity and it's for like, you know, you do it for a kind of like fitness, but then you want to get into, into boxing and you do like uh, competitive matches and you raise money for charity um so yeah that's how i kind of started boxing and that's where i came from before i turned professional i, I didn't actually go through the same amateur ranks that other people do okay so you, you're pretty much as a professional you kind of like learning on the job i'm learning on the job that's it yeah okay now when you was doing the white collar boxing and uh, stuff like that what was it about it that you was like man i think i might want to do this as a you know as a as a professional fighter well um I was getting, I was having problem finding opponents uh, for the white collar boxing. People were just like, I turned up to fight on some events and people just didn't turn up for the fights. So it was a problem. Um, and I really love the sport. I find it like, it's fascinating. There's always so much to learn. I like mm. the competitive side of it. Like I'm, you can never learn everything in the sport. So my, I spoke to my coach at the time, who's still my coach now, Noel Callan. And um, he said, you know, you can go down the amateur route and look towards an Olympic route or you can go professional um, and I wanted to stay with my team um, so I want to stay with him and my manager Derek Sweet D Williams so I decided to go professional um, and here I am now on like my seventh professional fight um, yeah I've worked very hard <laughs> to get to this point so, yeah. now let me ask you this um, a lot of people say that are you finding it that because like you said you never went through the amateur things but are you finding it that um as you're going along in, in the professional ranks that it's a different it's it's a different life like it's not normal yeah, and no. are you finding it harder to deal with that not normal no not at all um like like i say i'm learning on the job um to get my experience i travel around a lot so i go to uh, europe and scandinavia to train with some of the best uh, female pros out there um, and that's where I've got most of my experience from. So it's been like a, a sharp learning curve, but I get asked back, so I can't be doing things wrong. Um, yeah, and I find it different because, you know, it's there's always so much to learn. And also in professional boxing, you've got to think about it as, it's not just point scoring, there's also, it's like fighting, you know, you've got to think about both aspects of it. Um, especially when you're going for a 10 round fight, it's your kind of conditioning that comes into play later on. It's like being a full all round athlete. So there's, it's a whole different world to learn about. Um, but it's, yeah, it's fascinating. It's really good. Now, how do you maintain the, because uh, of course you, 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 you run into the, oh, she thinks she's a Billy bad, you know, she's a Billy bad and all of this. How do you maintain, uh, you know, 
being a boxer, uh, the job you have as as a professional uh, musician, and you know being a woman at the same time, because that that's got to be hard because. I think women boxers have to maintain more than what men boxers have to try to maintain. Oh yeah, you know, you've got to think about your image all of the time. Um, it's not, you know, I think it's difficult being a female in the sport because, you know, you have to still be feminine and still be a girl, you know, but then you've got to get people to realize that you can fight, you know, and, and sometimes that can be really difficult for people to take on board, you know, like, oh, you're a fighter, but you're also, a woman and you get dressed up to do concerts as well as a, as a musician and yeah it, it can be quite difficult um but yeah you know you just gotta slowly break down those barriers and get more people to kind of think oh you know yeah she can do all these things these are all possibles you know um and i try to do that with my fights you know try and showcase the best of my ability um and also the best of my character as well um so yeah it's, it's lots to think about it's quite a hard job <laughs> i must admit <laughs> now you know one thing I've noticed is some of your features as a female fighter are, are, are kind of astonishing. You're five foot eight. That's yeah. pretty tall. And you're a middleweight and, and you're you're a pretty I'm gonna say um you're a pretty compact middleweight, which means that you know you, you have a frame of somebody that could probably even be a super middleweight. Yeah, well, like actually my original weight class is a super welterweight. Um, I like that. That's my original weight class. And I really like being that weight because I'm quite big at that weight. And um, I also feel super quick there. I'm happy to, to box at middleweight. Um, I stepped up to super middle for this fight, last fight. Um, and yeah, no, I felt that, you know, for me, it it was like maybe the weight class slightly too far for me. Like, but, I, you know, I've kind of filled into the, the weight and we did... I did the fight and yeah, no, it was, it was a good experience. But for me, I think definitely I, I feel super strong um, at my best at super welter or middleweight. Those two weight classes are great for me. Okay. All right. Now you stepped up for the super middleweight title. You, you fell a little short. Um, what is it like? Yeah. What is it like uh, that atmosphere when you fight and you're in a championship title fight and you, 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 you don't win like you, you, you don't win like you, you uh you want to win but you got to get back on the grind what how, how do you get your mind ready to deal with all of the things from training to traveling because you actually had to come to the united states so training traveling uh then you don't get the decision now you have to go back to the drawing board how do you mentally prepare yourself for all of those things okay so for me coming to america that was an amazing experience my mm -hmm. first ever time in the states so uh, everybody made me feel so welcome like the american people have been great so I've, i had a wonderful time thank you very much for having me um and yeah it was an amazing experience to fight for a world title you know you, there's lots more involved you've got press conferences you've got public weigh-ins you've got quite a lot to be involved in um and then there's all the extra medicals when you come from abroad um, and so all these things have to be done. And then, then after that, you've got a 10 round fight. <laughs> so, you know, there's a lot to prepare for, but for me, the performing side of it, like, wasn't so stressful. Like I, I've been in big auditoriums performing before with orchestras, actually, funnily enough, but, um, that bit didn't phase me. It's just, you know, you've got to get in there and do 10 rounds. And I felt good. I came up a little bit short, but I, I don't feel, I feel proud of my performance. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, I feel proud of my performance because it's my seventh professional fight. Um, I haven't got, like, years of amateur background experience. Um, so for me, like, I, w I fell a little bit short, but there's things that I really, really want to work on. Um, I stepped up for the fight to super middle. And, yeah, no, I'm, I've taken everything away and I'm going to learn from it. And I think I'm not, I'm not too far off, you know. And, yeah, so I was, I was proud of myself and my team and us getting to this point. Um, and I'm, like... Obviously, you know, as any sports person is, they're like, you know, gutted when you don't win. Like that's that's always really disappointing because you put a lot of work in, and it's a disappointment of not not getting the the, the decision. But then, you know, for me, it was a win win scenario. I, you know, I, I've learned from it, and you can do nothing but learn from an amazing experience like that. So I'll go back. Um, I've got a little injury on my arm, but. Um, uh, after that's healed, I'll be straight back in the ring with my coach, Noel Callan. And we've got a few things we want to work on, but we're straight back at it. And I really am looking forward to it. I can't wait. Now, you are you still the WBC Silver Middleweight Champion? I am. Okay. Yes, I am. So you still hold that belt. So you, you, you still have a consolation prize. Uh, 
the decision to step up, because like you said, you're fighting a super middleweight. You never fought a super middleweight before. Yeah. Uh, but it was an opportunity for a title. The decision to step up to super middleweight. Um, and then like you had to come over to this country. Um, describe to us, because I think it's a little bit harder when you have to travel the way, because like you said, it's a title yeah. fight. You have all these tests. You have all these press conferences. And sometimes those things can be a little bit distracting, overwhelming. Now, by you being someone who has played in front of big crowds and 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 from uh, from musical standpoint, you were probably still able to be calm. But yeah, still, it, it had to be a certain moment where it you know you realize this gets kind of real here. Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, for me, it it was actually like. Well, I just had to take a step back and think, oh, my God, I'm in the States. You know, I'm in New York. I'm about to, like, fight for a world title fight. Um, this is crazy, you know? And th that is obviously a thought that you have. It's like, oh, my goodness, it's about to happen sort of thing. <laughs> um, but, yeah, no, I, I felt quite calm. I felt ready and collected and, and good to go. Um, but, yeah, no, it is different when you, you, you fight away from home because, obviously, you don't have your home advantage, um, you know, like, and especially when you're going in to take a title from someone, you know, you, you really have to make sure that you're going to take the title. Uh, you have to make a very, very clear, very clear cut decision that you can win the fight sort of thing. So you're kind of aware that it's going to be a little bit more work than you're used to, mm -hmm. but uh, like even more so like, I don't know, yeah, you know that you've got to put double the effort in because you're away from home and you've got to take the, the title off the champ. So, yeah, you've got to take that on board and you've got to be mentally prepared for that for sure. Okay. Now, um, we're going to, this is going to be something small we're going to touch on. And uh, I'm, I'm glad to touch on this so we can give it this explanation. Um, it says that uh, you have been suspended by the New York State Athletic Commission until no, uh, September 3rd. Explain yeah. to everybody what that is and the process and, and why that happened. Okay, well, um, with the New York State Athletic Commission, they are super, super cautious when it comes to your health and safety, which is absolutely wonderful. You know, it's great that these guys are taking our health super seriously. Um, so after the fight, like during the 10 rounds, at some point, I think me and Alicia, we got, we headbutted each other. Um, and <laughs> not intentional, of course, but uh, I had a little lump on my head. So they recommended that, you know, for safety reasons take a 30 day rest uh, we don't want you to fight for 30 days so it was completely health related and nothing else but i know that some people can read that and think oh what was going on what was going on but um yeah no it was literally a health reason for that okay i'm glad we got to explain what was it like <laughs> because i know when you was talking to my guys over at pep talk uk those are my boys i know them yeah i know when you was talking to them you indicated, yeah, you know, I wouldn't mind fighting Clarissa Shields. What was that like when she walked into the dressing room to take a picture with you? Oh, to, to be honest, like I was probably the last person I was expecting to see. Um, I just got ready. Um, I just like started to get out of uh, my shoes and stuff. So I didn't have my shoes on or anything. Um, but it was really nice that she came in to talk to me. Um, you know, like because she's uh, doing amazing things in our sport for female boxing. And of course, like we we've like, had some chat over Twitter and things like that, but you know, it's all healthy. Um, and it was great to see her and it was great as well to hear that she'd actually put the whole fight on her Instagram. Um, and of course she's got so many followers and it's great that she's been, she was there supporting female boxing and saying, look, this should be on TV. This is important. You know, it's a world title fight. Um, so it was an amazing experience to meet her and uh, to like chat to her about it. And, you know, gave me like some advice and some things, you know, so, yeah, it was it was really cool. Quite surreal, but really cool. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, as a female, listen, I'm a dad. Yeah. <sighs> and I have a daughter. Of course. I yeah. don't know how I would feel. <laughs> I, I like training. I'd be okay with. I don't know yeah. how I would feel if if she was to actually have to get in the ring and somebody had to throw a punch at her. So, like your parents, uh, explain the support or 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 um the the more or less the appreciation for yeah. understanding for you to actually because i know that, that that couldn't have been easy all of no. a sudden here you want to be a fighter yeah no definitely um when i decided that i wanted to do um when i want when i decided that i wanted to do like boxing i was doing it for fitness actually at the gym um at, at that time um my mom was very ill um and my 
like my dad encouraged me to go train because it was the one kind of time where I could like switch off um, at the gym and just like get sweat on and not get kind of upset about my mom and stuff. So he encouraged me with that. And so I think in some ways he's like, oh, you know, I encouraged you with it. Um, you know, I, was, I should have seen what was going to happen. Um, but yeah, no, my both my trainer and my manager said at the time, you know, you must speak to your fiance and your dad if you want to go professional because they're the two sort of really important men in your life. They're going to be the ones who are there supporting you. Um, and if you want to be a professional fighter, it has to be support from home as well. Um, because it's hard enough being a fighter without having to fight with your family about these things. Um, so I spoke to my dad and my fiance and they really trust my trainer um, and my manager to look after me. So, um, yeah, I think that was a really kind of strong bond that we've all got as a team. Like my team are really close to my family. So, yeah, um, I've got the support from home and the backing. Um, I think my dad still finds it stressful when he comes. He's been to all of my fights. Um, him and my fiance have come to every single one and they were in, out in New York. It was so nice to have them. Um, so, yeah, I think he still finds it stressful, but he's super proud of all the things I'm achieving. And I didn't think he'd ever see his, like he ever thought he'd see his little girl as a world champ, like fighting for a world champion belt. So, um, yeah, <laughs> I think it's exciting for him, but also stressful. <laughs> all right one of the what are some of the things that as a professional fighter because uh you have you have to be learning that yeah. you know it's a it's it's a it's a close it's a like a, a sort of tight-knit group yeah. uh, the boxing community um you know 100%. you've met clarissa shields you've met christina hammer what are these yeah. uh, like what is that like you like you know when you be a professional these are the women that are guiding the way that's taking time out to, you know, to either do a photo shoot with you or, or give you some words of wisdom. Yeah. No, it's it's amazing. Like, I really look up to these people. Like, I, I train a lot with Christina Hamer and, like, you know, I really admire her. And it, it's great to train with somebody like that or, or meet people like that, like Christina, because, you know, it's, it's good to meet a champion um, mm -hmm. and to, to see how a champion holds themselves and how, you know, they have such respect of the, like, for themselves and what they've achieved. Um, and they're helping to like lead the way in our sport and that's just an amazing thing to to be around it's exciting and you know it, it's definitely inspiring so yeah no I, I I love to work with these people and meet them because you know I hope one day that I'm in that position and that I can like you know be helping to like promote our sport and maybe people you know inspire people in boxing especially women well you 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 have said uh, and, and again uh, to, to people don't know, I actually, I follow the sport. You said that how you want to be an inspiration yeah. to other females that want to get into the sport of boxing. Yeah, even if it's not at a professional level, I think like I take boxing classes here in the UK, and you know, I really, it's really nice when I have women come to my classes because when I first started to box, it gave me a, a real self kind of confidence in myself, and I felt you know I wasn't going to go out and start fights, but I felt confident um, when I was walking about town and late at night I think I think any sort of combat sport makes you feel strong um as a, as a woman and mm -hmm. allows you to feel kind of like you're developed you've got a way of looking after yourself whether or not you'd ever have to use it um and I think sometimes that's that's a great thing for women to feel um sort of empowerment sort of thing so yeah no I encourage people and and if if I can kind of inspire anyone to get involved in the sport the, the more women we have in boxing the better as far as I'm concerned 100%. Oh, most definitely, most definitely agree with you. Most definitely agree with you on that. Um, so uh, what's next? And you got any fights coming up? Uh, uh, are you are you going to go back down to maybe a, a, a junior middleweight? Yeah, well, um, so as I said, I've got a small injury on my arm at the moment. And that's going to take a little bit of time to like rehab and heal. So I'm not 100% sure when I'm going to be back in the ring. But um, I'm going to take this time to like focus on a, learning a few new things with my coach and, and making some plans. I think uh, it'd be nice to do a fight at Super Welter, my original like junior middleweight, uh, my original weight, um, and or maybe at middleweight. You never know. Um, and there's a quite a, the team have quite a lot of plans, so we'll see where we go from there. Um, but yeah, no, at the moment I'm just resting and uh, rehabbing, and I'll be good to go as soon as I'm ready. I'm already bored of not doing stuff. So, <laughs> you know, why, why are you injured? Are, are you going to be like doing like little training things? Or are you just going to take a complete rest? No, no, I'm, I, I can't. Like, I've taken a week off, um, and like you know, I've tried to rest and, and 
just you know clear my head and stuff um but you know i was back in the gym this morning i was running <laughs> <laughs> i can't help myself you know can't sit still um, so my coach and i want to work on some footwork things and i don't need my arm for that uh, so we're going to try a few few little things with my footwork and upper body movement so uh yeah no we're going to spend a bit of time on that and uh yeah get a plan together for the next one all right and uh, I always ask this to, to, to female fighters. If you ever have a daughter, would you let her be a fighter? Yes, I would. <laughs> I totally would. I think that's because, like, uh, my mom encouraged me and my sisters to be really independent. And uh, I've got two younger sisters. And we're all very independent women. And we do what we want. Um, <laughs> and we're following our dreams and doing the things that we want to do. And I think it'd be very hypocritical of me to turn around and say to my daughter, no, she couldn't have a fight. You know, so if I have a daughter, I think I'd probably say 100% yes, do what you want. <laughs> now, what is that like? Um, because you said you got your dad's support and you got your fiance support. Yeah. What is that like to know that the two most important people uh, from a male perspective, the two most important people are really on board and really behind you? Uh, and, and I mean, behind you, alongside, alongside you while you go through this journey. It's an amazing feeling. Like you it kind of makes you feel like you know you can do anything and and that's really important i think you know if your fiance and your dad the two people who are closest to you can support you to do this then it makes me think that you know you can get other men who are not maybe so keen on females being in like combat sports mm -hmm. kind of get them involved as well because if the two people who are going to be obviously most worried about my health and safety if I can get them on board and I can get them to see like what I'm achieving and how I'm like growing in the sport, then I think that other people can get involved too. Um, it's also, you know, makes me really proud that they're, they're there and they're there supporting me at all of my fights. So yeah, no, I'm, I'm proud. I'm proud that they're there. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. Now, uh, anything you want to say to the people out here that's listening and, and, and to your followers? Um, thank you for supporting me to everyone up to this point. It's been amazing. Um, always amazes me how many people have like, you know, sent me good, good, good lucks and well wishes and things like that. And just following my journey and seeing what I'm up to. Um, it's, yeah, it's totally amazing. Um, and also hopefully I would love to be boxing back in the States at some point because I had such a great time over there. So, um, fingers crossed I'm back over there to make some more, hopefully meet some more people over in the States. So yeah, no, uh, thanks to everybody who's supporting me and yeah, watch out. Next fight will be coming up hopefully soon. <laughs> what was one of the, you know, what, what was one of the things you enjoyed the most when you was over here and, and because you, you hear about it all the time, the big venues and the food yep. and all that. What was one of the things when you got here, you just said, hey, I got to do this. I'm in New York. I got to do this. <laughs> um, well, I got driven around a lot because I had to go to lots of different medicals and things. But to, to see like the Empire State Building and just see all these things that I'd seen in films was insane. Um, and also like, um, you know, because there's quite a lot of Scottish and Irish people in New York. And yes. I had a lot of them. Um, a lot of them like wish me well and come out to you know say con like congrats on the fight and things like that. So, um, and also there was a local gym that I ended up uh, using, um, West Westbury 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 uh, Boys Gym, I think. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, uh, Joe uh, Joe Gadigan down there, um, he made me feel really welcome. Just let me use the gym for like shaking things out before the fight, and that was. Just, just so nice you know it was really really nice it was great to go into a real old school american style boxing gym oh wow so you you just you just had the time of your life i did that's why i can't be too disappointed you know because like i was close and yeah it was an amazing amazing experience and i can only take everything from it to learn so yeah i look forward to being in that position again sometime all right hopefully we'll hear from you again now tell everybody where they can follow you at or, or, or watch you as you go through your process of your uh, your professional career and music yeah. also as well and uh, music yeah definitely um so uh all of my social media is at team underscore ranking for instagram for twitter and i have a professional facebook page which is team ranking um i put everything under the same thing so it's nice and easy for people to find me <laughs> um so yeah if you find want to follow me and keep in touch and stuff uh go on to team team ranking team underscore ranking you know, I, 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 I don't know why I always forget to add this. I forget to ask this, because um, I actually uh, fought as an amateur. Do you get cranky when you're dieting? <laughs> uh, 
Oh, I should ask my coach that. Um, yes, <laughs> I do. Yes, definitely. <laughs> yeah, I get grumpy, but um, so when I'm when I'm training, um, yeah, I cut out lots of wheat and dairy because these things make me like carry lots of excess water, and of course, when you're trying to cut weight, excess water is really not helpful. Um, so yeah, I do get cranky. I get grumpy, and I never want to see any chicken again. Like that's <laughs> I'm just so not into eating chicken when I finish camp. You know. <laughs> and and uh, I, I like so like so like when your fiance know that you're dieting, and he purposely walks in with donuts, you look at him like if you don't get out of here with. <laughs> yeah, I mean he he would never do that. He's a wise guy, you know. <laughs> <laughs> He's a sensible guy. <laughs> Okay, that's, that's, that's good. All right, I, I definitely, listen, I want to thank you for taking time for, for being here with us. We're going to definitely be doing more of these. I enjoy talking to you. I, I think it's important that we promote the sport and from every aspect, from every aspect. Um, of course, like I said, you know, you can, this is a uh, Truth Effect Sports Talk. You can find us at Truth underscore Fact Box 1, uh, Instagram and Twitter. I try to keep it easy also. Uh, and then, of course, uh, threekingsboxing.com. And then Three Kings Box on the Facebook page where this this interview will be on. Hannah, I want to thank you so much for uh, joining us, taking time out. Really means a lot. Really appreciate it. Good luck on your journey. We will continue to follow you. And any news or any new fights you have coming up, please do not hesitate to reach out. And we will do all we can to help you promote. Ah, thank you. And thank you so much for having me. It's been great to chat to you. It's been, yeah, it's been great to catch up for sure. All right. You have a beautiful day. I, I got to... I got to do something with these teenagers I got around here. They just they stand in my face because it's summertime. I, I, I got to find them something to do. So. Good luck with that. All right. You have a good day. Yeah, you too. Thank you very much. All right, everybody. We're out.